Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're doing well. If you haven't seen the last video in the series that I uploaded, the part one video, I do encourage watching it as a lot of that info is just very useful for this video. And if you don't know about the terms and stuff that I'm using, you might just be a little confused. So just something to check out if you're unsure. Additionally, I'd just like to give a big thank you to Alex and Herbius. They've been helping me so much with this series and I've had to ask them so many questions and they've just been extremely kind and very easy to work with and I couldn't be more thankful for them. As well as a big thank you to Jaish and Agent Anti. They were kind enough to provide us their comprehensive document about how railgun setups work and all of that stuff and it's very good, it's very detailed, and that is now going to be in the description for both part one and part two. So huge thank you to those guys, absolutely incredible work. So first off, I wanted to actually go over what is a railgun turn. A railgun turn is where you take an item that has a hitbox that is smaller than the item itself. So for instance, we have this large tree, this dark sea tree, this large tree, but this very, very small hitbox. If you check to see if the item is collidable, which in this case it is, you could stand on it, you could jump on it, you could throw stuff at it, right? It will collide with the item. Well, if you stick the top of that item through this cannon and through this platform, then if you see these ores are going over the cannon, they'll now hit the item and bounce into the cannon. That's essentially all this is, is you're stopping an ore from going past the cannon and it is now going into the cannon. So now you have an instant turn, essentially. And that's pretty much how this works. Next, I'd like to cover a couple of items that are known to cause problems with your setup if you don't know how to use them properly. For example, Midas Blaster changes ore density when it's used, so if you don't know how or where to use it, you can end up having some problems or just a lack of consistency. So first I'd like to cover Final Fabergé. You're supposed to use this item at the first turn, ideally. If you can't fit it in the first turn or you can't get it to work or whatever, you're supposed to put it somewhere in the second line. So not before the first turn, so not here, but here, or at the first turn. Just don't use it on the second turn or during the eval line. It's just not worth it there. Try to use it here. The next one is Midas Blaster. So we used to use a lot of these back in like 2020, I believe, but it's changed a lot now. People use Mad Monster Smelters and now we only use one Midas Blaster. Midas Blaster is always supposed to go at the second turn. You can place it like this for an example, and it's just really good here. It actually helps with making setups more consistent if done this way. As well as Ooftopian can cause problems if it's used too early in the setup, and I'm pretty sure it's best to use it later than sooner. So for an example, we usually put this in the third line, now it is the eval line where you put all your ore evaluators and stuff. We usually try to use this here as it causes the least amount of problems with the setup. So pretty much just use this after the second turn as close to your evals as possible. Next, I'd like to cover what teleporter centering is. Teleporter centering is where you take one of these two items. For instance, I don't have two pot of gold, so I will use fireplace wall in this video as an example. You take this item and you force the top of it, similar to how we use railgun turns, to manipulate the ore into doing something. So as you can see, the ores move around pretty sporadically. They don't have any consistent flow or pattern or rotation or anything. So we essentially use the top of this item to center the ore to the middle, just like this. You're supposed to use the wall like the main part of the wall facing outwards, place them just like this, and it will cause a better consistency with how the ores move to the first turn. It's more noticeable here than it is on the conveyor, but as you can see, most of the ores look the exact same in terms of the way they're facing. Just, it's very consistent, and it helps a lot with your turns. If I remove this, you can see that they're spinning they're not moving in the same direction. It doesn't work nearly as well. So as a result, having your ores face the same way and stuff, 
your first turn will be much more consistent, and that's actually going to lead us into the next point about second line turns. Second line turns are different from first line turns because the ores aren't rotated the same, and as a result, the turn is not nearly as consistent anymore. So, some of the turns that work on the first line don't work on the second. For an example, uh, a good 0.7 turn is Burgor Diner. This is a great first line turn, but it is not a good second line turn. So, in most cases, you can't actually use the same turn twice, if that makes sense. There's a few that do work. For example, Dark Seed will work on both the first and the second line. However, you can't use Burgor Diner twice. Um, you usually have to mix and match a little bit, so just keep that in mind, is that not all of the turns in the game do work on the second line. Next, I'd like to cover what the best turns are for each line length. So for point six, here we have Renegade Behemoth Blossom. It's a pretty new turn as Renegades are quite new to Miner's Haven. However, it does work very, very well for a good first line turn. However, it's not very good for a second line turn, but again, it's a very, very quick and very efficient, very easy to build first line turn for point six. For point seven, we have Burgor Diner. It is also the best for point 0.9, however, point 0.9 isn't very used anymore, and I figured I'd just include it with the point 0.7. However, again, this is a very, very, very good point 0.7 first line turn. It is not a very good second line turn, so keep that in mind. Lastly, for point 0.8, we have Ethereal Sanctuary. This is a very good first line turn as well as the others it is not a very good second line turn however it's very fast and very consistent for first line turns and it works very good at point eight so before this video ends i'd just like to cover how to actually build all of the turns what line lengths they work for and what situations they work in so first up we have renegade behemoth blossom this turn works for exclusively 0.6 and it is not a consistent second line turn so it's only really good for 0.6 lines and for a first line turn not really much else however it's very easy to build we just need to focus on this part right here this leaf thing how we're going to build this is we're going to make it so the top of the hitbox so the top of the hitbox is as close to the bottom of the platform as possible. So as you can see, I can't go any higher as they start to collide. So it's going to be right around here. And you just need to line up the leaf so that way the ores bounce off of it and go straight into the cannon, just like this. It's a very easy one. It's not too hard to like figure out the right... It's not too hard with this item to figure out the right rotations and stuff. It's a pretty easy one to build. Again, it only works for 0.6, and it is only really good for a first line turn, not a second line turn. Next, we have Ethereal Sanctuary. Ethereal Sanctuary is a great 0.6 and 0.8 line length turn. However, it is not a consistent second line turn, only a consistent first line turn. This one's quite easy to build. You're just going to focus on this tree thing here, those leaves. We're going to start by getting it as close to the platform as possible. And we're going to need to make it so the way the ores are going to go is facing away from the processor. So just like this. You're essentially just lining up this part right here with where the ores are hitting. So just kind of back it up here and boom. It's very fast. It's a very consistent turn. Again, though, it is only really good for 0.6 and 0.8 first line turns. Not very good for second line turns. Next up, we have Burgor Diner. This is a very good 0.7 and 0.9 line length turn. However, just like a few of the other turns here, it is mostly used for a first line turn as it's very consistent. It's not a very consistent second line turn though. This is another pretty easy one to build. To get the rotation down, you want the chimney thing to face the direction that the ores are coming from. So pretty much facing the first cannon. And what you'll do is you need to get the burger to cover or be above the entire top of this cannon's conveyor. So as you can see, the burger is above, as you can see here. 
Uh, another way of knowing though is the same thing with the hitbox. The hitbox should be as close to the platform as possible. Uh, so I ended up using a platform here to put it up one unit so that way I can't go any higher. This is a pretty easy one to get right, but you want the con you want the conveyor completely covered by the burger just like this, and it will work pretty flawlessly. It's a very fast 0.7 and 0.9 line length turn, and yeah, it's just not really good for second uh, line turns. This one's kind of a weird one actually, as it's pretty much the only one that can do this, but Temporal Enchantment actually works for all line lengths and for all turns, meaning you can use it for pretty much both of your turns in any situation. The downside, as because it's not perfect, of course, is that it doesn't have the same speed that the other ones do. It's a little slower. Of course, not by too, too much, but it is still a viable turn for pretty much any situation. So to figure out first off the rotation of the item, we want it so the mouth of this cannon is on the other side of the processor. So you can see that the furnace bit is right here. Here's the mouth of the cannon. They're facing away from each other. Then get the item as close to the platform as possible. So for instance, I can't go any higher. And all you need to do is align this back part right here with the cannon and it will just launch the ores right in. It's still a good turn, but as you could see, it's just not as consistent and it's not as fast. There's faster and better turns. It is still a viable turn and it will work in pretty much every situation you need it for. Next, we have the Dark Seed Tree turn. This is a very good 0.6 and 0.8 line length turn and it's good for both first and second line turns. I actually use this one in my setup. I've used it for a decent amount of time now, and it's a very good turn. So this one's a little harder to get the right rotation for. The good news is the item is a square, so you can kind of just pick it up, rotate it, and just try out all the rotations until you can get it right. So the right height is a little weird to do, but we're going to get it first off as close as possible. So it can't go any farther. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down three times, so one, two, and three. And you'll know you've done it right because as you can see on the conveyor is that kind of like arch with the branch. It's kind of weird. I'll try to get a light really quick. Okay, I know how bright this is, but this is the best I could do. Uh, it's essentially you'll have this branch kind of covering this part as well as this big branch here. But what you're really doing is you're kind of just bouncing off of like the center of the main branch here and it just goes into the cannon. Again, if you can't get the right rotation down, just do it until you see those branches on the conveyor to look like this. That's how you know you've done it right. Lastly, we have the eye teleporter turn. This is a good turn for 0.7 and 0.9 line lengths. And it's good for both first and second line turns, so it's pretty useful in a decent amount of situations. So what we're focusing on here is this bit right here, this part dangling from the bottom of the small platform. And yes, you do need the small platform to make this work. What you're going to do is you're going to get the, the hydraulic as close to the bottom of your main platform as possible. And as you can see here, you just need to make it so this part right here bounces the ore into the cannon so if you like i put it here or something you could kind of see the hitbox of it better but just need to make it so it lines up with that angle kind of pushing the ore into the cannon just like that and that's pretty much it for this one uh it's not too crazy of a subject it's just kind of a memory game i feel like at a certain point in terms of just building them but honestly it's a pretty simple subject and it hasn't taken me a long time to figure all this out Again, huge shout out to everybody who's been helping with this series. I've been having a lot of fun working on these, and I can't wait to put out the next one. I hope you guys learned something from this. I'll see you soon. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.